Bobby, I'm here at Ebisu Circuit, the perfect place to come practice drifting at. I think there's like a competition going on on the West Coast today or this weekend, so there's a lot of guys that are out there practicing. I'm gonna be at school course, but um, I am here today to just kind of hang out with some of the guys that I know. This is David's JZX100 Chaser. This is Kenny's uh, something 17 crown something. I was told that David never been drifting and he's always liked the JZX chassis and he always wanted to. So I'm here to kind of maybe give him some tips and stuff like that and to see how a beginner could progress. He's a little camera shy. Yeah, so he, he's not a talker, but you know, obviously. Oh, what's up? Oh, yeah, how you doing? Yeah. Why'd you get a JZX anyways? And, and, and the fact that the car matches your sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a Sylvia before this. It was an S14. I like the convenience that the four doors offer the performance that it comes with too so but you've never drifted before no never so you never done have you done a donut before no maybe okay. on a wet day so this is going to be the first time yeah first all right time. cool so it looks like he got a helmet good start safety first brought some extra wheels and tires damn man you like baller wheels got some works who are these like xd 500 oh zr10 yeah zr10 Yep, and he's got some triangles, 225, 40, 18. Having a car is obviously important, and having a rear-wheel drive car with some kind of LSD in it would help out a lot. Viscous torsion, mechanical, have something like that. Then also, the first thing you want to do is learn how to slide the car. So they went out and bought like skinnier tires, not so much of a high-grade, high-grip tire for the rear. So you can get used to the car sliding. Um, very easily going out to drive a car that's really hard to drive from the get-go all you're gonna do is fight the car the whole time and you're not gonna be able to drift so the easiest way to do it is go out there with something easy go out there with a the car that's almost like a slick cart let the rear drive around you can spin out it's okay to make mistakes he's actually airing the tires up what are you gonna go to today uh, about four bar gonna keep it nice and stiff so I'll, I'll be able to keep my uh, tires spin and I get too much grip because this heavy beast right here is kind of hard to keep going that's what we found out last time I'm just coming out here to get you know a feel of the car and just have some seat time so I'm not going to try to get high speed and all that crazy stuff yeah so that's really basic you got a stock car so the drivetrain doesn't get hurt so much the car doesn't grip too much either so you're not breaking axles and just and trannies all day long and also, it's not like these tires are free. No, they, right? they do get expensive, but I just take the advice that Robbie gives me and just try to run with it and uh, utilize as much as I can with the little, little bit of resources I have, which is money. This is the way I put it. You either have a lot of money where you're a car enthusiast, where you just want to make your car dump a lot of money into it, or you don't have that much money, but you want to go drifting. You do the least things possible to get yourself to the track so you could have more seat time get used to driving once you go to the track you're spending like three to five hundred dollars for entry poles tires gas all kinds of stuff so just have that in mind so i'm going to go ahead and take a closer look at david's car hey this thing has lsd yeah it has a two-way and uh it's got some kind of suspension right yeah some hks pullovers all right and he's got seats in it it's a manual it looks like he has a boost controller and stuff on it too, but it's pretty much a VVTi 1J and it boosts a little bit more than stock, but it's pretty much stock. So, I mean, it's got a front mount intercooler, small upgrades here and there, but this is enough to get your car going and to be able to go and drift. Because like, seriously, you'll be amazed with what you can do with what you got. Even if you had 100 horsepower, even if you had 500 horsepower, it's all about balance, about how heavy the car is, how much grip you have and how much power you have so how much air are you going with i'm gonna go 3.8 for right now and then we'll see how i'm going if uh if it's too slick then i'll lower the tire pressure if it's too much grip i'll obviously i'll raise it um most of y'all are probably like that's insane because yeah these are rated at 44 psi i believe it said um but that's about what 60 close to 60 44 bar is 60 so yeah. yeah over inflating your wheels and tires you're at your own risk so I really recommend doing it on new tires because if you have old dry rotted tires and you put too much air in it, there's a possibility to blow up. And people get As Kenny was saying too, you can gradually go up. Go out on the track and if you're struggling to initiate, go up on air. Let's so say if you're steering over too much, the rear end is coming around too much and you're spinning way too much and it's too slick, 
then that's when you can just start lowering the air pressure. This is free horsepower right there. All right. Free horsepower. Also, weight. A little bit lighter would be better if you're on normal horsepower and you know slicker tires or less grippier tires and you're trying to learn it's best to just unload everything that you got like he took out his sub all this stuff that was in the car just unload the excessive stuff so it's not breaking things inside of the car or you don't have to worry about anything flying at you and stuff like that when you're when you're doing uh, drifting or going and doing donuts and yeah guys make sure when you're at Ebisu you sign in and uh, make sure you put this on the window on the inside or the outside where you can see it prove that you pay for the trek david and also have all your safety equipment like he just had a helmet you brought your helmet too right yes this is my car. and depending on the track i think Ebisu is a little bit more laid back but a lot a lot of the japanese track they want you to wear long sleeve shirts gloves uh, for your safety um so just go as uh, whatever track day event you're at and the rules they have there make sure that you don't come in and you know do whatever the hell you want and get kicked out because then people are going to think like oh drift guys are you know a bunch of idiots that are going to mess things up we don't want that So now I'm sitting in the, I'm sitting shotgun with David. He went out on track and drove around and pretty much went a little wild and to feel the car out. So let me go ahead and give him some tips starting with uh, doing donuts. Just uh, clutch in and just hold the steering wheel to the right and just hold it like that all the way to the right. Put it in first. Okay, then, then rev the car to maybe like a lot. You, you can go pretty high, like four or five, 5,000. Yeah, and then dump the clutch. Stop. Let's try to stay in the middle of the area so you're not going off course, but go ahead and try that again. Do the rev, dumping the clutch. There you, go. there you go. See? Now you can do that all you want, left and right. The car counter steer itself because yeah, that's usually to. how the car makes. So just keep getting used to the good spinning around. So you want to go and play around like that in a very safe, controlled environment. And just keep doing that and play with the car so you actually get the feel for the car to understand what the car is trying to do when you're doing something. So it's like experimenting what you can do and what the car is capable of. All right, cool. Then so now you know that the car was on the rev limiter, it was going da 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 da, right? Now that you know that the car slides, you don't have to be that much on gas. You can kind of back off a little bit and it'll still do the same thing. Okay. Yeah. You just, you just keep doing that. There you go. So you're actually counter steering too. Nice. Cool. You fun. already you did a lot more than um, what a beginner can do. Actually, you just went in circles and stuff. So um, when you're doing donuts, too, make sure that you're watching your uh, water temp um, as well because the car is not getting enough air, and then the car wants to run hot. So. Yeah, so David got on it and the front mount intercooler piping popped off. So how's it? It's dope. I don't everybody want should everybody should go drifting, huh? Everybody should. It's fun. At least ten times in their life. <laughs> don't be shy on the gas. Yep. You keep trying it and get comfortable with it. When you're giving it more gas, the car wants to turn in because it's mm -hmm. drifting. Yeah. And when you steer to the right, it's gonna go more in. If you steer to the left, the car's gonna try to go out. If you let off gas, the car's gonna wanna stop driving. So there's four motions that are in there mm -hmm. that you're gonna have to kind of actually adjust, adjust as you're driving because it's all how you feel and what the car feels like to you when you're sitting in it. All right. That's pretty good. So keep doing that mm -hmm. and um, try it left, right, mm -hmm. and try to do it so that you can start making a bigger circle. All right.
and go. Yo. Sick. There he goes, there he goes. Did a couple of good ones. Oh damn, your tire's done. And see, it's always a good time when your tire looks like that. <laughs> yeah, man, good job. Hey man, what are you what are you weaving here? Uh home economics class or something or what? <laughs> Dress got caught on here. Your your rubber dress. <laughs> All right, so I think Dave is doing a great job on his uh, donuts. So now we're gonna move on to trying to do figure eight. So on a figure eight, what you want to do is, after you're doing a donut, you got to find out where you're coming out of the donut or the turn, and then you kind of have to pause and let the weight transfer to the other side, and that'll kind of kick you out. So let me do a small figure eight right here. So it's kind of like. It's like you're doing a half donut, then instead of going back around, all the way around and coming around whatever obstacle you have, you're just gonna go that way. So it's almost like drift motion. So you're just like doing a right, right turn, left turn, right turn, left turn. So it's like doing half donuts and connecting in the middle with a, how can I say, left turn and right turn. You'll, you'll feel it when you do it. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but it's something like that.
All right, so what you think, man? First time out here doing donuts and drifting, you know? Man, it feels good. I want to do it again. Can't believe how fast like you can get stuff sometimes. Yeah, if the car is easy enough to drive, y'all. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. I recommend it to anybody who's trying to do it. All right, so I was here for a couple hours, so I got to calculate however hours times $500 an hour and have to charge them later. But come out to the track and drive as much as possible. Just coming out here to do this, it's not easy to just get a car, come to the track, get ready, and commit to doing this. And you know, you saw the progression that he went through just from one day. So just imagine if he did this more constantly, how far you can get with this. So that'll be cool to see, and I wanna kind of see how he does in the next couple of months and stuff like that. But thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys liked it. If you guys did, hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe, and until I see you guys next time, peace out.